Hello everyone, this is John Hashmet and welcome to Physics Simply. In this video I will be solving the paper 2 exam for February March 2023. So let's get started. Question 1 says which list contains two scalar quantities and two vector quantities. The first one is distance, speed, time and velocity. All uh, speed, distance and time are scalars. So there are three scalars, not two scalars. Force and velocity are vectors, distance and mass are scalars, so the choice is B. Question 2 says the diagram shows a speed time graph for a car. Which row describes the motion of the car at point X and at point Y? At point X we have constant acceleration since the gradient uh, of the graph is constant or because it's a straight line. And Y is a constant speed since the gradient is zero or acceleration is zero. So moving with uh, constant speed, constant changing speed, yes, that's for x. Uh, moving with constant speed, yes, for y. Moving with constant speed, yes, changing speed, yes. So the answer is D. Question 3 says, four objects are moving in a straight line. The table shows the distances moved by each object in each second of its motion. Which object is moving at constant acceleration? So uh, we compare the distances, uh, 5, 5, 5, 5, all uh, have the same distance covered at the same time. So this is constant speed, not constant acceleration. Then 5, 6, 7, 8, that's increasing with 1 meter per second every second. So this is a constant acceleration. So the answer is B. Question 4 says the drag force on a car increases with speed at 20 meters per second. The total drag force is 400 newtons. The mass of the car is 1200 kilograms and the driving force is constant at 700 newtons. So we have uh, an object that has a uh, 1200 kilograms or 1200 kilograms and there is a forward force of 700 newtons and a resistive force of 400 newtons. Uh, which statement about the acceleration of the car is uh, uh, at 20 meter per second is correct. Uh, the acceleration is 0.25 meter per second squared. Uh, we calculate the acceleration. Acceleration equals resultant force divided by mass. So we subtract 400 from 700 to get the resultant force over 1200. This gives an answer of 0.25 meters per second. So the first two are correct but will decrease as uh, time passes yes because acceleration means speed increases so the drag force also increases so when you increase the part with the negative sign in the equation that causes acceleration to decrease so the answer is a question 5 says a rectangular swimming pool is 50 meters long and 25 meters wide it contains water uh, at a depth of 2 meters, the density of the water is 1000 kilograms per meter cubed. What is the mass of the water in the pool? We can use the equation mass equals density times volume. And the volume is equal to length by width by height. So we can multiply all these values. 1000 times 50 times 25 times 2. We will get an answer of 2,500,000. So the answer is D. Question 6 says an object is rising vertically at constant speed through water. There are three vertical forces acting on it. The weight uh, W and the drag force D and the upward force which is the up thrust U. The object is rising so the drag force as opposing the motion should be pointing downwards. So any uh, choice with the drag force pointing upwards would be eliminated. And also, at constant speed, uh, the forces upwards should be equal to the forces downwards. So in choice C, we have an upward force of 2 newton and a total downward force of 4 newton. So it's not C, it must be D, where the upward force is 3 and the total downward force is also 3 to give a resultant force of 0. So the acceleration is 0. Question 7 says, two boys of equal weight uh, sit on one side of a seesaw as shown. Their father of weight 1000 newtons sits on the other side. The seesaw is balanced and is being used so that it moves up and down. During one part of the cycle, the father descends through a distance of 40 centimeters. For example, he moves this way 40 centimeters. 
and at the same time the buoy nearest the pivot rises through a distance of 20 centimeters moving in the opposite direction while the other buoy rises through a distance of 80 centimeters what is the weight of each buoy so the moment of the father will decrease by a value of the weight multiplied by the distance moved the weight of the father is 1000 newton so the moment decrease or the change in the anticlockwise moment would be equal to 1000 multiplied by 40 this should be equal to the change in moment of the clockwise moments which is the total change of uh, the first boy and the second boy let's call the weight of each boy x so the weight multiplied by distance for each boy uh, x multiplied by 20 plus x multiplied by 80 should balance the change in the moment of the anticlockwise so we have on the right hand side 100 times x and on the left side we have 40,000 newton centimeter then we divide by 100 so we get an answer of 400 newton for x question 8 says a student measures the length of a spring she then attaches different weights to the spring she measures the length of the spring for each weight the table shows her results uh, what is the extension of the spring with a weight of 3 newton attached to it so we have the total length at 3 newtons 533 we subtract the original length from this length to get the extension so the original length is at weight 0 so we have the original length 520 then we calculate 533 minus 520 we will get an answer of 13 millimeters Question 9 says the momentum of a body is changed by a force acting on it for a period of time. Which action increases the change in momentum? The change in momentum is equal to the force multiplied by the time. So doubling the force and having the time, that would cause no effect. So we multiply it by 2, then we divide it by 2. That's like multiplying by 1. So it's not A. Doubling the force for the same time, yes, that would increase the change in momentum since we be, will be multiplying by 2 having both the force and the time that would decrease the change in momentum having the force and doubling the time that's no effect same as choice a so the answer is b question 10 says the equation used to find the change in gravitational potential energy of an object can be written as y multiplied by z multiplied by delta H uh, where delta EP is a change in gravitational potential energy and delta H is a change in height the equation for the change in uh, GPE is mg delta H where m is the mass so we have mass here and G is the gravitational field strength so the common answer is A question 11 says a machine has a power input of 200 watt and a useful output of 1000 joules in six minutes what is the efficiency of the machine so we can use the equation efficiency equals power output over power input times 100 or energy output over energy input times 100 but we cannot use one uh, as energy and one as power for input or output they must be both uh, energy or both power so if we use power out over power in we can use the output power as energy over time so 1000 joules one kilojoules over six minutes that's six multiplied by 60 all this divided by the input power which is 200 and then we multiply by 100 that would give an answer of 1.3 and 8 recurring percent which is approximated to 1.4 percent Question 12 says, what is the unit of power? The unit of power is what? So the answer is D. Question 13 says, the diagram shows a rectangular block of weight 16 Newton. It is resting on a flat surface. What is the pressure at the base of the block due to its weight? And the unit required is Newton per centimeter, not, new, uh, not Newton per meter squared, which is Pascal. So we don't need to convert the centimeters into meters. We just need to find the base area, which is 4 multiplied by 5. So we divide 16 over the product of 4 times 5. That would give an answer of 0.80 Newton per centimeter squared. So the answer is C. 
Question 14 says an oil tank has a base of area 2.5 meters squared and is filled with oil to a depth of 1.2 meters. The density of the oil is 800 kilogram per meter cubed. What is the force exerted on the base of the tank? We can use the two equations for uh, pressure. Pressure equals force over area and is equal to rho gh, density multiplied by gravity field strength and the depth. We need the force so we move the area to the other side by multiplication so we multiplied the density which is 800 by the gravity field strength 9.8 by the depth 1.2 and then multiplied by the area which is already in meter squared so we do not need to convert it multiplying all these together gives an answer of 23,520 which can be approximated to 24,000 so the answer is D the next question says a sample of a gas is trapped in a rigid container as the temperature of the gas increases the pressure increases which statement is not correct the gas molecules have greater kinetic energy yes because the temperature is increasing the gas molecules hit the walls of the container harder yes since they have higher speed they collide with greater momentum the gas molecules hit the walls of the container more frequently yes as speed increases the rate of collision increases the gas molecules move further apart this is wrong because it said a rigid container rigid containers have constant volumes so the spacing between molecules remains constant so the answer is d question 16 says what happens when the temperature of a liquid increases the mass of the liquid increases no the mass of the liquid increases no the volume of the liquid increases yes because it's expanding uh, making the liquid less dense yes not more dense since volume is inversely proportional to density so the answer is c the next question says a bar of metal which is a good thermal conductor is heated at one end what is the main method of transfer of thermal energy along the bar lattice vibration movement of atoms of the metal along the bar uh, in solids uh, molecules do not leave their positions transfer by electrons yes vibration of atoms of the metal bar so lattice vibration yes and vibrations of atoms of the metal bar yes so technically you cannot have the same uh, meaning in two choices so the answer is c and actually electrons move faster than the energy would be transferred by lattice vibrations between atoms in a solid so the answer is c Question 18 says a transverse wave moves along a rope. The diagram shows the position of the rope at one particular time, which two labeled points are one wavelength apart. They must be exactly identical. So we have X and Z. Uh, the left of X and Z is upwards and the right of X and Z is downwards and both are on the underserved position. So the distance between X and Z is the wavelength. So the answer is C. Question 19 says, light in transparent plastic meets a boundary with air. Light is transmitted into the air only if the angle marked theta in the diagram is greater than 36 degrees. So when it is 36 degrees, the light emerges on the surface. So we can use theta to find the critical angle, which is between the ray and the normal. So the critical angle is actually 90 minus 36 what is the refractive index of plastic we can use the equation refractive index equal one over sine the critical angle so one over sine 90 minus 36 that would give a value of 1.236 and so on so we can approximate it to 1.2 question 20 says a thin converging lens has a focal length f and object o is placed to the left of the lens as shown that's before the focus where is the image formed and how does its size compare to the object by placing it between the focal point and the center of the lens the image is always virtual and always appears behind the image so on the same side not on the opposite side so we have c or d and the image is always upright and magnified so it's larger than the object so the answer is c Question 21 says, which diagram shows what happens when a ray of white light passes through a prism? 
you should already know the uh, shape of the diagram it's not a since uh, dispersion happens twice once inside and once outside and it's not b since uh, this causes the light to bend away from the normal as it passes into the glass means uh, that it's speeding up but it should be slowing down so it's not b and c also is wrong since after the glass block it will bend away from the normal so it should point downwards so the answer is d question 22 says a television station transmits a signal to a television receiving dish the television has an on off indicator light the television is switched on by a remote control which changes the indicator light from red to green which electromagnetic wave used in these actions has the longest wavelength so between a satellite and uh, a station or a dish that's actually microwaves red and green are visible light and from the remote controller it's infrared radiation and the longest wavelength is microwave so the answer is a question 23 says a student makes a list of some applications of waves medical scanning of soft tissue sterilizing water using sonar to calculate ocean depth which applications use ultrasound waves ultrasound waves are used for medical scanning and in sonar to calculate the depth of oceans not for sterilizing water so the answer is only one and three so the answer is c question 24 says the diagram shows a bar magnet at rest on a smooth horizontal surface a length of soft iron wire is held parallel to the magnet the wire is released what happens to the wire the wire moves away from the magnet no it's uh, iron so it's a magnetic material it should be attracted to the magnet so it moves towards the magnet the answer is b but we read the next choices the wire's center stays in position and the wire rotates uh, through 90 degrees clockwise that's acting like a compass a compass is a magnet so uh, it would point one end or one uh, head towards the north pole and the other towards the south pole uh, so it would not e even rotate 90 degrees it would stay in position actually so uh, it's not c and it's not d so the answer is b question 25 says which diagram shows the electric field pattern and direction around a positive point charge a positive point charge would have an electric field pointing radially outward so the answer is a Question 26 says a laboratory has a standard wire of known resistance. It also has other wires made from the same material as a standard wire but of different length and diameters. Which wire would definitely have a resistance less than the standard wire? So less resistance that means a shorter wire and a wider area or wider diameter. So larger. So the answer is C. Question 27 says the graph shows the relationship between the current in a circuit component and the potential difference across it. The graph has a straight section and a curved section. What happens to the resistance of the component in these two sections? In the straight section, since it's a straight line through the origin, the resistance is constant, so no change in resistance in the straight section. And the curve is actually inclined towards the potential difference axis needing that it needs more energy so more energy means increased resistance so resistance increases so the answer is d the next question says the diagram shows part of a circuit what is the combined resistance of the resistors since the outermost connection is a parallel connection we use the part which is in series first so we have two plus one that gives a three ohm resistance on the upper branch and then we calculate 3 ohms in parallel with 4. We can use product over sum. So 3 times 4 over 3 plus 4. That gives an answer of 1.7 and so on. Approximately 1.7 ohms. So the answer is C. Question 29 says the diagram shows a circuit which includes 2 resistors and a battery. The voltmeter reads 6 volts on the 10 ohm resistor. What is the potential difference across the 30 ohm resistor? In series connections, the voltage is divided according to the ratio of resistors. We can use cross multiplication in this situation, saying if the 10 ohms resistor takes 6 volts, what does the 30 ohm resistor take? Then we cross multiply 6 multiplied by 30 divided by 10. That gives an answer of 18 volts. 
Question 30 says a wire is moved down in a direction perpendicular to the magnetic field. Three changes are suggested. The speed of movement of the wire is increased. The magnetic field strength is decreased. The direction of the magnetic field is reversed. Which changes increase the electromotive force induced? You can increase the voltage by increasing the speed of motion. So the first one is correct. Or increasing the length of wire inside the magnetic field or using more turns of coil which does not exist in the choices and by increasing the strength of the field and not decreasing so only one is correct so the answer is B question 31 says a wire is moved across a magnetic field this causes an induced current in the wire the induced current interacts with the magnetic field to produce a force on the wire this is called Lenz law in which direction is the force the force is always opposing to the change in magnetic field or the change in flux, so it would oppose the motion. So in the direction of the current, no. In the direction of the movement, no. Opposite to the direction of the current, no. It's opposite to the direction of the movement of the wire, so the answer is D. Question 32 says a 100% efficient step-down transformer has a primary voltage VP and primary current IP. Which row compares the secondary voltage with VP and the secondary current with IP? So a step-down transformer decreases the voltage and increases the current. So the voltage would be less than VP and the current would be greater than IP. So the answer is C. Question 33 says the scattering of alpha particles by a thin metal foil supports the nuclear model of an atom. Why are alpha particles used rather than neutrons? Because they always travel more slowly. That's not true. Because they are heavier. Uh, th that could be a reason, but would not affect the results of the experiment. So no. Uh, because they are larger in diameter. That's actually same as B, confirming that it's not the answer. Because they have a positive charge. Yes, they are charged and the neutrons are not charged. Question 34 says an iron nuclide is represented by the symbol Fe56 uh, and 26. Which statements about the nucleus of this iron nuclide are correct? The nucleus contains 56 neutrons. No, it's 56 nucleons. Uh, the nucleon number is 30. No, the upper number is a nucleon number. So the first statements are wrong. The proton number is 26. That's correct. So only 3 is correct. Question 35 says a sample of radioactive isotope has an initial rate of emission 128 counts per minute and a half-life of four days. How long will it take this total time uh, for the rate of emission to 4 to 32 counts per minute? So we have an initial activity, we have final activity, and we have the half-life and we need the total time. And there is no mention of background, so we will assume that there is no background. When we have the initial and final activities, we use the initial and divided by 2 until we reach the final. So 128 divided by 2, that gives 64. And then 64 divided by 2, that gives 32. So we passed two half-lives to reach the final count. And each half-life is 4 days, so two half-lives would have a total time of 8 days. Question 36 says several scientists are working in a laboratory. The scientists are experimenting with sources which emit ionizing radiation. Each scientist is given a list of safety rules. Three of the rules are shown. Keep at least two meters away from other people. Do not stay longer than four hours per day in the laboratory. Stay behind the lead lined screen. Which safety rules are for protection against the effects of ionizing radiation? So the first one is actually uh, a precaution against viruses and bacteria. So it's not the first one, but the second one and the third one are for radiation. So it's two and three only. The answer is D. Question 37 says, which data is needed to calculate the average orbital speed of a satellite around a planet? The average orbital speed is two pi r, which is the circumference of the orbit and r is the radius of the orbit, which is the distance from the uh, satellite to the center of the planet, divided by the periodic time of rotation or the time taken to complete one orbit around the planet. So uh, the distance of the satellite from the center of the planet, yes, that is R that is required. So all these are possible. 
the radius of the planet itself is not needed so the answer is actually b we do not need to continue but the period of rotation of the planet itself is not needed and the time for the satellite to orbit the planet is needed so the answer is for sure b question 38 says approximately how long does it take for the moon to make one complete orbit of the earth it takes one month which is uh, approximately 27.9 days so the answer is b question 39 says the energy generated in stable stars comes from nuclear reactions which type of reaction occurs in the sun it is the fusion of hydrogen during a stable star stage of a star uh, so helium nuclei break up breaking up is not uh, fusion that's fission so helium nuclei join together to form hydrogen or hydrogen nuclei join together to form helium it's the lighter that form the heavier so it's hydrogen forming helium so the answer is d question 40 says two quantities define the hubble constant h naught the speed at which the galaxy is moving away from the earth the distance of the galaxy from the earth d uh, and the hubble equation is v equals to the hubble constant multiplied by d because v and d are directly proportional so it's not proportional to 1 over d it's proportional to d making the answer either a or c and the hubble constant you should memorize it is 2.2 times 10 to the power of negative 18 so the answer is a i hope you enjoyed this video and it was useful for you I wish you all the best and I will see you in the next video.